Welcome back to my channel everyone. Sweet Tips here. I've got a fused silica melt dish here. We're going to zero this out. We've got some 14k gold scrap material here. I'm going to add that to the melt dish. Looks like we've got 112.5 grams. Zero the scale. I've got some 10k material here. I'm going to add that to the melt dish now. That's 61.4 grams of 10k. Zero the scale one more time. We've got some 18k scrap here. We're going to add this to our melt dish. And we've got 49.3 grams of 18k. I'm going to take this out onto the melt table. And we're going to start melting up the gold here so we can encord it with silver. Now we're going to put some flame on here and melt the gold. While I'm waiting for the gold to melt, I've calculated how much silver we need to add to the gold in our melt dish to properly encord it. And I've used these constants for each carat. For 14K, we use 1.265, 10K, 0.635, 18K, 1.9. So we multiply the amount of 14K we got times this. And we get these products. This will be the amount of sterling silver that we need for each of the uh, selected amounts of carat gold that we have. I totaled it all up. I've got 274.8 grams of sterling silver. And so what we'll do, I've got some sterling silver here. We've got 271.1 grams. That's close enough. We'll use that to encourage our gold.
Okay, here's our imported gold. Let's go get the tap water off of here. Get this into a beaker and we'll start parting out the silver and the base metals with nitric acid. good with some distilled water to get all the tap water off of here. Here's our carrot gold that's been encoded with silver. What I'm going to do is add some nitric acid, dilute nitric acid 50-50 with distilled water and 68 to 70 percent nitric acid. We're going to pour that right on in now. And now we'll cover this up. We'll set it up on the heat and let this start to react. I'm going to add a little bit more dilute nitric to ensure that uh, all the gold is covered in there for us. This is nitric acid. Label says 68 to 70 percent. I'm going to add this right on in now. This is the acid mixture that I just prepared. Nitric acid. 50-50 dilute nitric acid with distilled water. And we'll let this react. Many of you may be wondering why did he alloy sterling silver with the carrot scrap? And the reason is we alloyed that additional sterling to make a 25% gold alloy. The rest is 75% silver and base metals. Now, these boiling nitric acid treatments can penetrate to the core of each piece in there and remove all of the silver and all of the base metals. The nitric won't dissolve the gold. It gets left behind untouched. The first nitric acid boil is complete. I burnt some pieces of sterling silver and added them to my silver jar. Now what we'll do is we're going to pour off this first nitric acid boil into this silver jar and save this liquid because it's going to have a lot of silver in it. I'll add some water to the encorded gold. Set it back up on the heat. Now we'll add some more nitric acid and do a second nitric acid boil. Nitric boil number two.
nitric boil number three. This third nitric boil is complete. I'm going to pour it off into my silver jar. We're going to add some water, put it back up on the heat, and now what I'll do is pour in some more nitric, and this will be our fourth nitric acid boil. This is the fourth nitric boil. And what we'll do is uh, pour this off now into our silver jar. And uh, I don't mean to bore you with these nitric boils, but I want to include each one so that you can see the progression, how the uh, gold looks as the silver and base metals get removed from it. And the liquid becomes lighter and lighter blue and what we want to end up with eventually is a solution that's completely colorless. And that'll tell us that all the uh, silver and the base metals have been removed. Also, I'm having a, an issue with my sound. I've got a new sound. Uh, new microphone and I'm trying to get the uh, get the bugs worked out of it get the volumes set correctly and I noticed it was clipping in some earlier shots so bear with me on that all right let's put some more water in here more nitric acid and this will be our fifth nitric acid boil. While I'm waiting for this fifth nitric acid boil, let's go over here and take a look at our silver cell. It's time to harvest the pure silver crystal. I've already removed the electrodes from the power supply. Now we're going to just drop our cathode connection down out of the way here. Here's a look at the pure silver inside of the silver cell. Should be about 1.5 kilos of high purity silver. I'm going to pour off some of the electrolyte out of the silver cell. Here's what the silver looks like after all the electrolyte has been removed. Now we're going to scrape down the silver off the inside of the bowl.
Now we're going to transfer the silver out of the silver cell into this beaker. the excess electrolyte that's in our silver here into our uh, jar that has our electrolyte in it. Before I got started I meant to show this. These are the anode filters with the anode slimes from the last two runs that I've done and we'll hang on to those because it'll contain precious metals. I'm adding some distilled water to the silver. I'm going to rinse some of the electrolyte off of here. Here's a look at the silver crystal down inside the beaker. It's about 1.5 kilos of high purity silver. I'll just keep uh, this silver stored in some distilled water. We'll give it multiple distilled water rinses until we get all that electrolyte rinsed off of there. We'll add these rinses to a bucket and cement the silver out with a piece of copper and I'll do the same thing with the used electrolyte. I burned a piece of silver we're going to add this to our uh, silver jar now. You can see the uh, color of the solution. It's still a little bit blue, which tells me we still got a little bit of, of metal coming out of our gold. But the gold is looking really good. Let's add some water. Put it back up on heat. This thing looks like it's wanting to try to boil over. And so whenever that happens, I just add some water and kind of dilute it and it calms the reaction a little bit. I'm adding some nitric acid. And this will be our sixth nitric acid boil. This is our sixth nitric acid boil. 
and the solution is now looking colorless like we want to see got a little tint of blue to it but what we're going to do is we're going to save this acid now because this acid can still dissolve silver and base metals Here's what our gold looks like down inside of our beaker. It's looking real good. Real good. Let's rinse the gold off a little bit here. I'm adding some distilled water to the gold and what we'll do now is set this back up on the heat and just let this boil a little while in some water. The gold has been boiling in water now for about half an hour. I'm going to pour this water off into another silver jar here. Here's a look at the gold so far. It's looking very nice. Nice and clean. Now we're going to transfer the gold into this large 4 liter beaker. I'm expecting about 4 troy ounces of gold from this lot. I'm adding some hydrochloric acid to the gold in our large beaker. I'm going to add about, uh, I'm going to fill it up to about the half liter, 500 milliliter level. I'll put a cover on this large beaker. I'm going to set this up on the heat now and start heating up our gold and hydrochloric acid mixture. I'm adding a shot of sulfuric acid. Uh, just a half a milliliter or so and this will help us precipitate out any lead that may be present in our gold. I'm expecting about four tray ounces of pure gold here so what we're going to do is we're going to measure out about 75 milliliters of nitric acid. We're going to add this right into the gold and start dissolving the gold. been on here for about 15 20 minutes and uh, looks like we pretty much got everything to go in solution might be a few little bitty crumbs so what we'll do we'll set this back up on the heat and I'm gonna crank the heat on this now we're gonna boil it and see if we can get the rest of the gold if any to go into solution here you can see I've evaporated the solution down to about, it looks like it might be about 100 milliliters in there. So we've got four troy ounces of pure gold dissolved in just 100 milliliters of liquid. What I'm going to do is start adding some small doses of hydrochloric acid to rehydrate the solution. See what happens here. A lot 
lot of fume production going on. It's probably the nitric acid being driven off. I'm going to add some hydrochloric acid to a beaker. That's about 150 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. We're going to rehydrate our solution now with this hydrochloric acid. Let's pull this down off the heat now and let it cool down. Now we're going to cool our solution off further by adding some ice. This ice is made from distilled water. Probably see some silver chloride coming out of solution when we start uh, adding this ice. Here you can see the silver chloride coming out of solution from the uh, ice that we added. We've got our solution cooled off now. What we're going to do is I've got a filter set up here. We're going to filter our solution now, get this silver chloride out of here. Here's what's left on our filter. So what we're going to do now, I think, is uh, we're going to pour it back through the same filter a second time. Our filtering is complete. What I'm going to do is uh, put this filter over here on this flask. And uh, I'm not going to rinse it because uh, we might put some of this solid material back in solution and pull it through down into our uh, gold down here. So I'm just going to hang on to this. I'll put it on the filter, rinse it out later get the gold solution out of here and add it to my waste container and recover it later. Here you can see we got the solution to clear up nicely. So we're going to transfer the gold bearing solution into a beaker. The beaker is full of ice. Ice made from distilled water. Whenever I have two or more troy ounces to precipitate out, I always add ice to keep it cool during the precipitation. I'm going to reach in here and get some of our solution on a piece of filter paper. I just cut these filter papers into a strip and use these as my test strips. We just want to make sure we got gold in solution. I know we do, but I just want to do the test. Sometimes uh, people who are new to refining will have a problem 
and not get any gold. And I think that's due to the fact they probably don't have any gold in their solution. So we always want to do a status test before we drop the gold. Now we're going to add some stump out, precipitate the gold out of our solution. I should have about four tray ounces, so I'm thinking eight spoons ought to do it. Here goes the first spoon. Just going to start adding this in now to get all the gold to come out of solution. That was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see what that give us. I think it might be good enough right there. Let's see if we've got all the gold to come down. There you can see negative reaction on our test strip there. All the gold has been precipitated out of our solution. Give this a quick stir. We've allowed our gold to settle for about a half an hour. So what we'll do now is bring up our waste container. And what I'll do is pour the waste off of our gold into this temporary waste container. Here's a look at our pure gold powder. Try to rinse some of the chemicals off with distilled water. hydrochloric acid onto the gold and what we'll do is set it up on the heat and give this a quick boil in hydrochloric acid. The gold has been boiling in the hydrochloric acid for a few minutes and we'll just pour this off into our waste container Give it a quick rinse with a little bit more hydrochloric acid. Let's pour this off. Now we'll give it a rinse with some water. Distilled water rinse. Right, the gold 
looks superb. Single refining. I'm going to transfer the gold into a melt dish. Here's our gold powder. I'm going to put it over here on our melt table. I'm going to melt this up a nice gold bar. Here's our little bar of pure gold. Came out looking fairly decent for a single refining. Let's see what we got for a weight. We got 126.8. We were looking for an estimated yield of 128. So we came pretty close to our estimated yield. Alrighty very nice Let's see what this is in troy ounces 4.075 troy ounces that's pretty close so uh, alrighty this will conclude the video I'd like to thank everyone for watching